accounting for merchandising operation. We have two systems for evaluating inventory. They are perpetual inventory system and periodic inventory system. A merchandiser may follow any of these two systems, either perpetual or periodic. The main difference between them is under perpetual inventory system, the count of inventory and the calculation of the cost of goods sold is done throughout the year evenly whenever we are having any purchases the goods purchased will be added directly to the inventory and whenever we are having any sales of goods the cost of goods sold will be calculated after this sale so under perpetual inventory system we are continuously having a physical count of inventory and ending inventory and cost of goods sold throughout the whole year. We do not have to wait till the end of the year and count our ending inventory and calculate the cost of goods sold as a total. But if we are using periodic inventory system, we wait till year end and calculate the ending inventory and calculate the cost of goods sold as a total at year end. It's not done during the year whenever we purchase the goods or sell the goods. And that's the main difference between following a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system. So perpetual means we are having count for the ending inventory and updating our inventory and cost of goods sold throughout the year evenly. Whenever we are having any purchases, we add the purchases to the inventory. And whenever we are having any sales of goods, we calculate the cost of goods sold. Under periodic inventory system, when we have a purchase of goods, we just record it as purchases. And we do not add it to the inventory during the year. We wait till year end and calculate our ending inventory. Ending inventory of one year will be the beginning of the next year inventory. So in, in every year, we are having a beginning inventory, which is the amount of goods available in the storeroom at the beginning of the year. And during the year, we are having purchases. And at year end, we are having our ending inventory, the amount of goods available in the storeroom not sold yet. So our goods are either sold out or remain as ending inventory. At year end, using a periodic inventory system, we need to calculate cost of goods sold by adding our beginning inventory to our purchases. What we had from the beginning of the year plus what we purchased during the year will give the amount available. For example, if I am telling you that we had inventory beginning as 16,000 and we purchased during the year amount of goods 120,000, then if you add the 16,000 plus the purchases 120,000 that's all that was available in your storeroom if i told you at the end of the year your ending inventory was 40,000 not sold so how much was sold the cost how to calculate the cost of goods sold you just add beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending you get the cost of goods sold so at year end, we prepare a journal entry in which we record our ending inventory debit as current asset that will appear in the balance sheet of this year. And in the credit side, we close purchases because you know purchases recorded in the debit side. When you close it, you close it credit. 
and you close the beginning inventory because it's not available anymore. Now we do not have the beginning, we have the ending now. So we close both purchases and beginning inventory in the credit side and we record the ending inventory in the debit side. The difference between the two sides will be the cost of goods sold in the debit side. This is a journal entry to close purchases and beginning inventory and to record the ending inventory and cost of goods sold at year end. Here we need to understand the difference between returns and allowances. When you purchase goods, sometimes you find that the goods are not in the same quality that you expected. So you may decide to return the goods back. If you return the goods back to the seller, physically you return the goods back and got your money back, we call it return. But sometimes the seller may tell you, you can keep them and I will give you a reduction in the price because I know they are defective and they are not the same quality as you expected. So for these defective units, goods, that you decided to keep them and the seller is going to give you a reduction in the cost, we call it allowance. Both returns and allowances would reduce the value of your purchases reduce the cost of the purchased goods. So we call it return and allowances. So return and allowances stands for the value of the goods returned back by the buyer to the seller. If the goods was returned back physically, we call it return. If it wasn't returned back, and I just got a reduction in the cost because they are not the same quality I expected, then we call it allowance. Then we need to understand transportation cost between the buyer and the seller. Who's going to pay for the transportation? It's written in the invoice. Either it's free on board shipping point or free on board destination. And free on board means the ownership is transferred from the seller to the buyer. The ownership of the good is transferred to the buyer from the seller because the seller owns the goods. When they are sold to the buyer, the ownership is transferred from the seller to the buyer. If it's free on board shipping point, it means that the ownership transfers as soon as the goods are shipped. As soon as they are shipped on the means of transport, the ownership is transferred from the seller to the buyer. So in this case, the buyer is the one who will be responsible to pay for the transportation of the goods. If the goods were lost on the, uh, on the way, in its way to the to the buyer the buyer is responsible for this loss because now the buyer owns the goods because it's free on board shipping point if it's free on board destination it means that the goods will be owned by the buyer only when it reaches to his store the seller is responsible about the goods and has the ownership of the goods during its way until it reaches the destination. So that is the difference between free on board destination and free on board shipping point. Free on board shipping point means the buyer is going to pay for the transportation. Free on board destination means the seller is going to pay for transportation. Then we need to understand the difference between cash discount and trade discount. Both of them are discount in the selling price, having a reduction in the selling price. The difference is for cash discount, it is conditioned with the payment of cash within a specific period of time. And that's in case of credit sales. When I'm selling the goods on account, 
I have accounts receivable, it means that I'm going to receive my cash later on. What if I want to have my cash quickly? I want to have fast payment to my cash. I want to encourage the buyer to come and give me my money, my receivable. I need to receive my receivable quickly. In this case, maybe I give him a discount and this discount is conditioned with payment of cash quickly within a specified period of time. So we call it cash discount. It's not given on time of trade. It's conditioned with the payment of cash. And it's not recorded in the invoice because the selling price is the original selling price without any discount until the buyer comes and pays the money to the seller. In this case, he's going to get the discount if the payment was done on the specified date. But if he's late, if the specified date passed away, he didn't pay on time, then he's not going to get the discount. He's just going to pay the original price. So cash discount is conditioned with the payment of cash within a specific period of time. It's given with the aim to get payment fast. And there is an accounting treatment for cash discount in both the books of the seller and the buyer. Because when we have cash discount, it will appear in the journal that my accounts receivable was more than the cash collected. If I collected my money on time and I am giving the discount, the cash I am going to collect will be less than the receivable and the difference will be recorded as discount. Cash discount, as I said, it's not shown as deduction in the price in the invoice. The invoice is going out with the original price. And if the cash was paid on time, then the price will be reduced and discount will be recorded. For trade discount, it's on time of trade without any condition. Just discount. Just instead of selling the goods at 100, I'm going to sell it at 90 without any condition. And the aim of this kind of discount is to sell more, to sell high quantity of goods. And there is no accounting treatment for trade discount. It's not recorded in the accounting books because if I purchase the goods at 90 without any condition, I'm not going to record that it used to be 100 and I got a discount, so I'm recording 90. I will record just 90 without having to mention the discount. That's why trade discount does not appear in the accounting books, while cash discount would appear in the accounting books. And we can have better understanding about the difference between cash discount and trade discount when we go to our numerical example. Here we have a numerical example to have a better understanding for purchase of goods, selling of goods, pre on board shipping point, pre on board destination, difference between trade discount and cash discount. So let us go and solve the example together. Here it says on November 1st, a company or a trader purchased from Sky Traders 2000 units at a price of 150 per unit with trade discount 5%. What does it mean trade discount 5%? The price is not going to be 150 because there is a discount of 5%. Trade discount means without any conditions, just on time of trade. How to calculate the 5% discount? You must, apply, you must apply 150 by 5 over 100. You know that the discount is 7.5 LE. So the price after the discount will be 150 minus 7.5, the price will be 142.5. Multiplied by the 2000 units because this 142.5 is the price for one unit. So you multiply by the number of units 2000, you get the value of the goods purchased, 285,000.
you recorded in the journal as debit purchases credit accounts payable by 285,000. Somebody would say, but it says credit terms 10, 10, and 30. What is, what is 10, 10, and 30? 10 slash 10, comma, and 30 means that the, the seller promise to give 10% discount if the cash was collected within 10 days and maximum due date is in 30 days. That's the meaning of 10 slash 10 and 30. Why I didn't calculate the 10% now? Because that's a cash discount. It's conditioned with the payment of cash. When the trader, when Arrow Trader would go to pay for the accounts payable, if it was within the 10 days, he's going to get the discount of 10%. But up till now, the price is 142.5 per unit without the 10% discount, just the trade discount, 5% was applied. But the 10% conditioned with the payment of cash will not be applied on November 1st. It will be applied only on the payment of cash. So the journal entry would be debit purchases by the amount of 285,000 credit accounts payable by the same amount. And that's the journal entry we prepare on the purchase of goods on account. What about the transportation 200? It says 200 transportation cost was paid. Who paid for the transportation? It says free on board shipping point. We said free on board shipping point means the buyer is going to pay for the transportation. So in this case, Arrow Trader is going to pay for the transportation and we are preparing the journal for Arrow Trader. So it will be debit transportation in credit cash. Why transportation in? Because it's recording transportation for goods coming in. It's a purchase of goods, not a selling of goods. And transportation in is an expense. That's why it's debit. And cash is credit by the amount of 200. What if it wasn't free on board shipping point? If it was free on board destination? In this case, I'm not going to record a journal entry because I'm required to record the journal entries for Arrow Trader. And Arrow Trader here is a purchasing trader. He is the buyer. So he pays for transportation only as a buyer when it's free on board shipping point. If it's free on board destination, then the seller is the one who's going to record the transportation, not the buyer. And I'm required here to prepare the journal entries for the buyer, not the seller. So I only record the journal, the transaction of transportation for the buyer if it's free on board shipping point. Then we go to 2nd of, no of November. It says that Arrow Traders sold to Smart Traders 800 units at price 90 with trade discount 10%. Trade discount means what? It means discount on time of trade without any conditions. So the price is not going to be 90. The invoice price will be deducted from it 10%. Calculate 90 times 10%, it's 9 LE per unit discount. 90 minus 9, then the new price after the discount would be 81. 81 multiplied by number of units sold, 800, we get a value of 64,800. We record the sales as debit accounts receivable, credit sales revenue. It's opposite to the, trans the journal of purchases. Purchases was debit, sales revenue is credit. Accounts payable is credit, accounts receivable debit. And it says credit terms 5, 10, 5 slash 10 and 60. What does it mean? It means 5% discount if 
collected the money cash within 10 days. I promise to give 5% discount if I collected the cash within 10 days. And maximum due date in 60 days. I have to collect my money in 60 days. In 60 days, that's the due date. But if I collected my money within 10 days, I will give a 5% discount. That's a cash discount. It's not recorded on time of trade. It's not going to be recorded on November 2nd. It will be recorded only when smart traders come to give me my cash, when I'm going to close my receivable. It says free on board destination. Free on board destination means the seller is the one who's going to pay for transportation. And the transportation cost was paid by 300. So arrow traders is the seller. So he's going to pay for the transportation. And I am preparing the journal for arrow trader. If I need to prepare the journal entries recording the transportation out. Why this time it's transportation out, not transportation in? Because it's of selling goods, so goods are going out. That's why it's recorded as debit, transportation out, credit, cash. Then we go to November 3. It's about return. It says that 20 units were returned from November 2. 20 units of the units that Arrow sold to smart traders on, on November 2nd, they were returned back. How to calculate the value of these 20 units? When they are returned back, they will be returned with the price after the discount, not before the discount. Because the price of selling the goods was not 90, it was 81. Because there was a discount of 10%. So you multiply the 20 by 81, the value of the goods returned back 1,620. How to record this 1,620 in the journal as a return of goods? These goods were returned from the sales. So it's debit, sales return, credit, accounts receivable. By this journal entry, we are decreasing our accounts receivable. We are getting from the accounts receivable in the credit side because this amount is returned back. So the money, the value of this of these goods will not be received. So we are closing its accounts receivable. How to close its accounts receivable? You make the accounts receivable credit. What about the sales revenue? It's reduced by the sales return. That's why always the sales return would be debit. So the journal entry to record sales return is debit sales return credit accounts receivable. Then in November 5, it says Arrow Traders returned 30 units from units purchased on November 1. This time Arrow Trader is going to return from the purchased goods. So it will be recorded as purchases return. We are reducing our accounts payable by the amount of the return. To calculate the value of the returned goods, you multiply the 30 units returned by the price after the discount. Because the price used to be 142.5. Multiply 30 by 142.5 then the return goods value 4,275. This return is return from purchased goods. Arrow trader, the one who purchased the goods on November 1, is the one who is returning back the goods. So it's return from the purchases. It closes part of the accounts payable and reduces the amount of purchases by purchases return. To close part of accounts payable, to close accounts payable, you make it debit. And purchases return credit. You can notice that the journal entry is the opposite of the purchasing journal entry. When we purchase the goods, it used to be debit purchases, credit accounts payable. When there is a return from the purchases, it's debit accounts payable, credit purchases return. At year end, 
when we prepare the income statement, we are going to subtract all the purchases returns from the purchases to get the net purchases. Then on November 8th, it says that Arrow Trader received the balance due from Smart Trader. Then Arrow Trader now received the balance from, from Smart Trader. Who Smart Traders? It was on November 2nd where Arrow Trader sold goods to Smart Traders and promised to give a 5% discount if collected the money cash within 10 days. So I need to check whether it's within the 10 days or it's a late payment or a late collection of the money. Yes, it's within the 10 days because it, the selling of the goods was on November 2nd and now the money is received on November 8th. So it's within the 10 days. So it's going to give a discount. Arrow Trader is going to give a discount that he promised 5%. 5% of what? 5% of the accounts receivable. How much is the accounts receivable? The accounts receivable used to be 64,800, but when goods were returned back, the accounts receivable was reduced by 1,620. So you subtract 64,800 minus 1,620, you get the amount of accounts receivable which is 63,180. That's the value that's going to be multiplied by 5% to know how much will be the discount. So you know the discount is 3,159. So the cash that will be collected by Arrow Trader will be by the value of 63,180 minus 3,159, which is 60,021. That's the amount of cash that will be collected for the accounts receivable. Cash collected is debit. When accounts receivable are, co are collected, it's credited. And the difference between the two sides will be sales discount. So on time of collecting the cash, the amount of cash collected was less than the accounts receivable to be closed. The accounts receivable to be closed is 63,108. But the cash collected is less. Why is it less? Because we are giving a cash discount. That's why I told you when I was explaining the difference between cash discount and trade discount, cash discount appears in the accounting book. It was recorded as sales discount. Why sales discount is debit? Because it's like an expense. The, the seller had to give this discount in order to collect his receivable quickly. So it's expense that he pays in order to collect his cash quickly. So it's debit cash and sales discount credit accounts receivable. On November 9, it says that Aru paid the balance due to Sky Trader. The same idea. Aru is now paying his payable. He already had a promise from Sky Trader that if he paid the payable within 10 days, he's going to get a 10% discount. And it's within the 10 days, so he's going to get the discount. What if it was after the 10 days? It was November 20. He's not going to get the discount. He's, not, he's going to pay the payable as it is, without any discount. But because it's within the 10 days and he had a promise of 10% discount if paid within 10 days, then he's going to get a discount of 10%. 10% of what? Of the amount of payable. How much is the amount of payable? The amount of payable used to be 285,000, but some of the goods were returned back, and that reduced the amount of accounts payable by 4,275. So now, on that day, the accounts payable is 285,000 minus 4,275. We get a difference of 280,725. 
multiplied by 10%, then the discount would be 28,072.5. That's the amount of discount that Arrow Trader is going to receive. He's not going to pay this value. So how much cash will be paid? The cash paid would be the 280,725, the amount of payable, minus the amount of discount. Cash paid, so cash is credit. Accounts payable closed, so accounts payable debit. Accounts payable closed in the debit side, cash paid in the credit side. The accounts payable closed is not equal to the cash paid. Why? Why accounts payable closed not equal to the cash paid? Because I got a discount. And this discount is like a profit for me. I got the discount. That's why the discount in case of purchases is always credit. Because you know profits and revenues are always credit. So the journal entry would be debit accounts payable by the amount to be closed from the accounts payable, credit cash by the amount of cash paid, and the difference between the accounts payable closed and the cash paid is called purchases discount.